The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our scripture lesson for this past Sunday, which was our Ascension Sunday. We're looking at Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, where the evangelist Luke writes, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. My dear friends in Christ, Luke, as I described him before, is an evangelist. He wasn't one of the 12 apostles, but he was one that the Holy Spirit inspired to write the book of Acts and also the gospel that bears his name. He introduces the book of Acts by writing, in my former book, Theophilus, in the book of Luke, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. Theophilus was the first recipient of the inspired work of the book of Acts, also of the book of Luke as well. And this book, it was first given to Theophilus. It's been passed on to all believers ever since. And now in the gospel, what Luke did is he wrote about, it says, what Jesus did during his ministry. In the book of Acts, what Jesus did, or what Paul, what Luke did is he wrote about what Jesus continued to do through his apostles, through his witnesses, after he had ascended into heaven during his ministry, and especially during those 40 days between Easter and his ascension, Jesus was active, instructing the disciples, giving them whatever last minute instructions he could give to them so that they would be equipped to be his witnesses so that they could carry on Jesus' work. He also, during them, those 40 days, he made many appearances to individuals and to groups of disciples so that they would have what we could call proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was alive. Jesus instructed them also about the kingdom of God, it says here, teaching them that God's kingdom, it's not an earthly kingdom, rather it's a kingdom in which Jesus is living and ruling in our hearts through faith. And it's a kingdom that'll find its eternal fulfillment in the mansions of heaven. But now just before he ascended, Jesus told those disciples, you will be my witnesses. And when we think of those disciples, we can easily understand how they were Jesus' witnesses. They were his witnesses to go out into the world with the message of Jesus the Savior because, well, they had seen the risen Lord. They had heard Jesus preach and teach, and they had seen the miracles that he had performed. 
they had what we could call that proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was alive, that Jesus was who he said he was. But now we haven't seen our risen Lord. We haven't actually heard him speak. We haven't seen the miracles that those disciples saw. So how can we be his witnesses? Jesus is also saying to you and to me, you are my witnesses, you will be my witnesses. And what God did for us is he gave us the scriptures so that we have all the facts that we need to witness for Jesus. We have the facts to be Christ's witnesses. We have the facts to be absolutely certain that we have a Savior who lived and died and rose from the dead to pay for all of our sins so that we can be absolutely certain that heaven is our eternal home. In, in the mind of a believer, there's no question, there's no doubt about it. We have the facts in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit assures us of that through the word of God. Well, Jesus said of the scriptures, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In the story of the rich man and poor Lazarus, Jesus talked about two men who died. And, well, the one, the rich man, he died, not a believing child of God, therefore he went to hell. Lazarus, well, by the grace of God, a believing child of God. So he ended up going to heaven. But now when the rich man down in hell realized what he had done to himself, well, the story tells us that he called out to Abraham in heaven. And in Abra to Abraham in heaven, he asked that Lazarus be sent back to this earth to talk to his brothers so that they wouldn't have to suffer eternal punishment as well. He made that request, but in the story, Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. And Jesus' point in that story was a simple point. The rich man's brothers, they didn't need to see Lazarus. They didn't even need to see Jesus. They needed only what they already had, and that was the scriptures. The scriptures which talked about Jesus, the Savior. They had what they needed. They had all that they needed, and likewise, we can say the same thing. We have all that we need because Jesus has given us the scriptures, because God has given us the scriptures. There are all the facts that we need to tell people about Jesus, the Savior. There we have the facts that even though we're sinners who would deserve God's wrath and punishment, yet what the scriptures tell us is that we can be absolutely certain of our eternal life through faith in Jesus, through what Jesus has done for us. When Martha's brother died, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus said that, and then he asked Martha, do you believe that this? Like Martha, we can reply, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Isn't it great for us to know that we can be sure of heaven? we can be bold and confident witnesses for Christ. And that's because in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit working in our hearts means that you and I, we have the facts to be Christ's witnesses, to be sure of heaven.
Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us Jesus to be our Savior. Thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit to make us believers in Jesus, the Savior. And thank you for giving us the scriptures, the facts, the proof, the evidence that assures us of heaven and empowers us to be Christ's witnesses. We pray in his name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.